when exploring a Minecraft world, you may come across a coral reef. Maybe you'll pick up a coral block or two, and then you'll be on your way. But do you actually know what coral is? Because there seems to be a little bit of confusion around it. So, let me clear some things up. And hopefully teach you some stuff at the same time. First of all, corals are animals. They're actually under the phylum Cnidaria, which makes them related to jellyfish. Although, it's probably pretty hard to tell. That's because you need to look really, really close. This is a coral polyp. They're only 1 to 10 millimeters in diameter, so they're incredibly small. But hundreds to thousands of these polyps can form colonies, which are the individual reef corals. This is a basic diagram I've made to show the structure of a coral polyp. This is the gut. Nutrients and other food are digested here. It's really simple. Then you've got tentacles. Tentacles are covered in nematocysts and cilia. Nematocysts are stinging cells that many Nidaria have. They're used to catch small prey or defend the organism by stinging would-be predators. That's why it hurts when you get stung by jellyfish. Cilia are a lot less painful. They're tiny hair-like structures on the entire surface of a coral polyp. And they do a variety of jobs by generating small currents. They're essential for feeding, cleaning, exchanging oxygen between the water and coral, and ventilation. Cilia are super complex and really important to the coral, and a bit too much for me to be able to explain. In this video at least. Sorry if you're interested. There is actually a type of photosynthetic algae that lives symbiotically with coral. It's called zooxanthellae, and like most things coral related, it's obnoxiously hard to say and spell. Zooxanthellae absorbs sunlight and provides food for themselves and the coral they live in. Waste products like carbon dioxide from the polyp are absorbed by the algae to do photosynthesis, in return providing oxygen and glucose for the coral to be able to do respiration. Over 95% of the coral's food comes directly from this relationship, and in return, the coral protects the algae. The CO2 that isn't absorbed by the algae is used by the coral to create calcium carbonate, aka limestone, which builds up the coral. This is what forms the rock-like structures of coral reefs. Corals alone are incredibly interesting, but so is the habitat that they both inhabit and largely create. Coral reefs. Coral reefs are also incredibly important for a variety of reasons, both ecologically and economically. And I'm going to explain them to you. Firstly, coral reefs are the most biodiverse marine habitat on the planet, supporting around 25% of all marine species despite covering a mere 0.2% of the ocean floor. Over a million species of animals live on coral reefs, which isn't very well represented by their in-game counterparts. I mean, come on, Mojang. We could have manta rays, nurse sharks, octopi, clams, dugongs, jellyfish, anemones, lobsters, shrimp, hermit crabs, sea snails, even more. <sighs> so many possibilities, yet we just get some fish, some squid, a dolphin, and some turtles? It just feels a bit disappointing. If any modders are watching, then please hit me up. I'd love to work with someone to make an ocean update that involves a lot more of real-world biodiversity. Uh, anyway, went a bit off topic there, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, coral reef importances. Remember how I said coral turns CO2 into their limestone skeletons? Well, this CO2 comes from the water, which comes from the air. So, just like forests on land, coral reefs are actually a store of carbon, which is very important for combating climate change. Coral reefs are also important for other habitats, like seagrass meadows and mangrove forests. Many reef species live between these different biomes, so nutrients is shared between them. And finally, the weird shapes of coral actually slow down the waves, and this decreases coastal erosion. So, they're actually protecting the towns and cities that are nearby them, as well as just the natural coasts. 
This also includes slowing down tsunamis. But that's just the ecological importances. You also have the economic importances. You know, the stuff that benefits humans directly. Most of which builds off the details actually mentioned in the ecological importances. Yes, that was a hard sentence to say. Welcome to Hotel Nidaria. Situated on the beautiful Sunshine Coast, Hotel Nidaria is only a short walk from beautiful beaches and the gorgeous Great Barrier Reef. Here at Hotel Nidaria, our only goal is to make you feel at home, which is why we offer you a variety of rooms such as- Uh, excuse me? Um, can we help you? Yeah, this is my video. I didn't agree to any adverts. I'm not even monetized. Get out of here. Yeah, get out of here. Shoo, shoo. Get out of here. Ugh. Anywho's, welcome to the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, well, well, just imagine it's a Great Barrier Reef. I, I couldn't quite afford a flight to it in person, but I could still tell you about it. The Great Barrier Reef is the largest coral reef in the world, covering 2,300 kilometers off of the coast of Queensland, Australia. And every year, approximately 2.19 million tourists visit, bringing with them $5.89 billion, which has contributed to the Australian economy and provides 69,000 jobs to locals. This is just one reef. Tourism from coral reefs is mega important economically to any country with one. Although it does also bring some negative effects to the reef itself, but more on that later. Coral reefs are massively important fishing grounds with an estimated 6 million fishes being supported by them in a hundred different countries. In many parts of the world, fishing provides a crucial source of both food and also income. Coral reefs are incredibly important for this because of their high levels of biodiversity. There are many different types of fish and other aquatic species that can be fish that can be harvested and that allows people to catch them, sell them, make a profit and feed themselves and their families. I've got one last thing for you when it comes to importances and it's that many medicines were originally developed from animals on coral reefs. Many species that live on coral reefs produce toxic chemicals to protect themselves. These chemicals can be used as medicines in carefully controlled amounts. For example, Dolestin 10, a medicine that inhibits cell division and has been tested as a treatment for cancer. Dolestin was originally isolated from sea hares, a type of marine mollusk that lives in warm, shallow reefs, like in the Indian Ocean. And... <laughs> So I was eating my lunch when I noticed someone just bobbing up and down on the reef. A tank, yeah, no, I think there's someone on the reef. Can uh, anyone confirm? Ah, uh, yeah, Jay, there's somebody panic out there. About 11 o'clock from you. Right, I'll bring him in. 16 year old Joss Exum recording an educational video about coral on the reef when he suddenly remembered. That he couldn't breathe underwater. Fortunately, lifeguard Jays was soon on the scene. However, Josex's condition was looking quite worrying. He was under the water for a whole three minutes at this point. Ooh, oh, that, this, this guy's almost dead. But yeah, then there was only really one option left to save the kid. It's um, it's just, it is really is too bad that I grabbed the wrong potion because I um, I did like this job. Incidents like this serve as an unfortunate reminder that YouTubers aren't very smart. Coral reefs are massively important in the world, just like all habitats, but they are especially so. Unfortunately, though, it isn't all sunshine and sea hairs, as coral reefs are massively under threat, largely because of us. Since the 1950s, we've lost over 50% of our coral reefs, with 14% of that being just since 2009. That's 26 years ago. But why has this happened, and what threats do people pose to coral reefs? Well, firstly, we physically damage reefs. Trash can bash into coral structures, disregarded fishing gear is especially a problem, and even careless mooring of boats can cause damage. Dropping your anchor onto coral will obviously break it apart. This carelessness even extends to divers, 
who try to touch or try to stand on coral, which is obviously going to damage them. But it isn't just carelessness. Fan corals, hard corals and hard-shelled mollusks are often taken and turned into souvenirs to be sold. Or animals like tropical fish are taken to be sold as pets, despite the fact that the trade of many of these species is restricted by CITES. For example, stony corals, which are the most traded CITES-listed marine animals globally. Yo, Wandy, you got the stuff? Ha <laughs> ha! Yes! Just the block I've been needing. I'll take your whole stock. Aha! No, you won't. You're under arrest for the illegal distribution of protected corals. Oh, snap! You'll never take me alive! Remember how fishing is an economic importance to coral reefs? Well, it can also be a threat. If the catch rate is excessive, and is more than the rate at which fish are being replenished, then this is called overfishing, and it can lead to the extinction of fish and other organisms that rely on them. Certain fishing methods are also very destructive, like bottom trawling, which destroys huge areas of the seafloor, or dynamite fishing, which, um, well, I think you can guess why that's bad. There is a wide range of pollutants that can harm coral reefs. Oil spills, for example, even in lower concentrations, are toxic to corals, and most other organisms. And nutrients like nitrates and phosphates from agricultural runoff can stimulate algal blooms. The shading caused by these algal blooms reduces photosynthesis by plants and the zooxanthellae within corals, eventually leading to their death. You may have heard of ocean acidification. It's caused by CO2 reacting with water in the oceans to form carbonic acid, which lowers the pH of the oceans, making them more acidic. It's obviously made worse by climate change, where more CO2 is in the atmosphere than ever before. Why is it a problem though? Well, lower pHs make it more difficult for corals to produce their limestone skeletons. So basically, they can't really grow much. Coral bleaching is another thing you've probably heard about. It happens when zooxanthellae is expelled from the corals, giving them a pale, bleached look. It can be caused by a variety of natural and human factors. A natural factor may be increased light levels caused by solar events, but many human activities can also cause bleaching, including higher water temps caused by global warming, and pollution, including sewage and even sunscreen. Bleached corals aren't necessarily dead, but they are less quick to grow, and often will die. Coastal development and the expansion of coastal towns often leads to an increase of the other threats I've mentioned, especially tourism and physical damage. All of this bodes a dark future for coral reefs, but it isn't all doom and gloom. There is stuff we can and are doing to minimise further damage and to allow coral reefs to bounce back. For example, many countries are trying to protect their coral reefs by designating zones as marine protected areas, or national parks. In these areas, human activities may be banned or highly monitored, and a big emphasis is put on educating people on how to be safe to coral. For example, divers being taught not to touch corals or areas being designated as no fishing zones. Speaking of fishing, the fishing of certain at-risk species may be banned to allow their populations to recover, and many restrictions are also placed on damaging fishing methods, such as bottom trawling or dynamite fishing. Fishing by small local communities is almost always sustainable. It's usually the bigger industries that cause the damage, and so they're the ones that should be restricted. Did I? Did I actually catch a tripwire hook? Gosh, the amount of trash in the oceans. Tourism should also be controlled. Certain activities that are damaging and harmful should be restricted, and ecotourism should be heavily promoted. But so far, I've just spoken about ways we are minimising further damage, to allow reefs to rebuild themselves. But are there any ways in which we can actually promote growth? Well, of course there are. And the example I like to use is artificial reefs. Artificial reefs are made by sinking structures that act as a substrate for corals to grow on. These can either be created solely for this purpose, or by sinking structures that were made for other purposes. For example, sinking ships. 
Coral likes to grow on them because it's a stable substrate and it allows reef dwelling creatures an area to live in before the coral's fully grown. Lastly, I'd like to highlight that not all exploitation of coral reefs has to be stopped. There are many ways in which it can be sustainable, but over-exploitation needs to be minimized and put to an end. And remember, this is a video game. Feel free to use coral in builds. Minecraft is an infinite world, but our real planet is not. We do not have infinite materials and we do have consequences for our actions. So please take what you learned today and keep it in mind for the real world. But with that, thank you very much for watching. Most of the sources for this video should be linked in the description if you're interested. And I would like to give a massive thank you to everyone who cameoed in the video. So M, B, H, Jays, Mogswamp and Shula, thank you a ton for lending your voices. And an extra big thank you to the Redfish who helped me build a lot of the set for this video. All their channels will be linked in the description. So please go check them out. I know this video has been a little bit of a drag. Didn't realize how long it how long it was going on for, but it's taken me about two months to make this. So I'm I'm glad to be finishing it off. I hope you have learned something from this video because coral is really interesting and it is something that we need to protect a lot. But even if you haven't learned or memorized everything that I've said, even if you've learned something, I'd be happy. But with that, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, I forgot my snorkel.